Well, greetings once again, my AP Calc BC students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School, and we are taking a look at essentially what is our last example from topic 6.12. This is out of the AP Calculus uh, ABBC course and exam description, but I want to make it very clear that the content that you're about to see in this video is uh, based on the solution of a certain type of integrand that would not appear on the Calculus BC exam. So why am I recording this, right? Well, obviously, Calculus 2 uh, is, is a very rich, deep course that contains quite a bit of, of, of integrals that you would encounter that wouldn't necessarily be required for a student who's preparing for the BC exam uh, as a high school student. So uh, if you're going to end up taking Calculus 2 in college, or maybe you're watching this as a current Calculus 2 student in college, and you're a little bit kind of concerned about how do you solve these kinds of integrals, this is the video for you. And the video is going to feature the repeated quadratic factor. It's the one kind of integral denominator that we haven't quite seen yet. So, hey, I'm excited. I got my Bitmoji drops going on limited edition. Let's take a look at a repeated quadratic factor. So here it is. The question reads, find the antiderivative of 8x cubed plus 13x over x squared plus 2 squared. So if you kind of watched some of my other videos, you'll notice that I tend to take a, a little departure away from the actual integration problem itself. And I look at just what I have with this fraction. And I notice that this denominator, well, we're supposed to factor the thing, but I notice that it will not factor. It's completely factored into its lowest form. Now, whether or not the numerator factors is really immaterial, and it's really largely a waste of time factoring it. Now, what you have to do is recognize that this is going to break itself up into, well, a certain number of fractional components added together. And the question is, first of all, how many fractions? Well, by virtue of the fact that we have this quadratic x squared plus 2, that technically is appearing twice, repeated a second time, we are going to use two of these fractions. The first denominator will contain the first power of that quadratic factor, and the second denominator would contain the square of that quadratic factor. If you take a look back at example four when we built our first partial fraction decomposition of repeated linear factors, we did something very, very similar. And so it shouldn't be much of a shock that we would set it up this way. Fact of the matter is, the common denominator between these two fractions certainly is x squared plus 2 quantity squared. Well, why do we need this one here as well? Well, he is going to provide some coefficients at the top, values that we could use that will help us find the solution. We don't want to leave this guy just by himself because it's kind of clear that if that be the case, then it would be equivalent to the 8x cubed plus 13x, and we need more than that. And so what we're going to do is recognize that we have a quadratic here. So we have to have the linear factor on top. That would be an x to the first, having a coefficient of a, and then, of course, the constant that may be there as well. So it's very consistent, again, with the linear approach, except we were only putting single constants up here, like just capital A or capital B or what have you. Now we have to put the linear ax plus b. And then over here, you pick up right where you left off. You start with c, and we have c multiplied by x plus d. Again, very important to consider. This factor down here is technically quadratic. One could argue that, oh, if you expand it out, it's really going to be quartic or raised to the fourth power, but not so much. In its current state, we recognize it to be quadratic, the repeating aspect has been taken care of, and therefore we call the, the numerator linear. Now we go to our patented next step, which is to multiply everything in this equation by the common denominator, x squared plus 2 quantity squared. Now that's going to essentially eliminate the denominator here. And then in the ax plus b, 
right here, we're going to have one more factor of x squared plus 2 to contend with, unfortunately, because we have an x squared plus 2 quantity squared serving as our common denominator. But good news is on the horizon because the cx plus d will not have to be multiplied by anything as the common denominator x squared plus 2 squared will cancel his denominator away completely. And so here we find ourselves. Previous videos, I mentioned a very powerful technique that was coined by a mathematician in the 19th century, Oliver Heaviside, called the Heaviside method. Some of you might be referring to it in your courses as the cover-up method. And it works wonderfully when you have these opportunistic x's that you could plug in that would make parts of this equation on the right side disappear. But as you can see, there is no x or a real number for x that's going to make that happen. And so whenever we get to this particular place with our solutions to these partial fractions, I tend to use what I refer to as the matchup method, which just simply means I'm going to go ahead and simplify the entire right side by expanding or multiplying binomials together. And so that would start me off with ax cubed on the out on the first times first. Uh, on the inside, I have bx squared. The outside is 2ax. And my last would be 2 times b, right? If you have to draw your arrows to make sure that everyone gets multiplied by a partner, totally OK. And then, of course, the cx plus d doesn't really have anything to do except tag along at the end. Now we start grouping like terms together. You see how this 8x cubed plus 13x has been waiting ever so patiently on the left side. He's wanting to start to match up with like terms on the right side. And so I noticed that there's only one cubic x on the right side. So he's going to be sort of a loner at this particular stage. And we could say the same thing about the x squared term. He's a bit of a loner as well. But when we look at the x terms, of which there are two, we could try to combine those by adding them, but let's face it, they don't add together very well. And so instead, we think about factoring out the x. That certainly leaves behind 2a plus c. And we tend to do something a little strange, maybe. Put that factor of x at the back end instead of the front end, because we want this 2a plus c to serve as a coefficient of the x. And then the last term that you can see here 2b and 2d can actually go together because they serve as a constant term as they are not being multiplied by x. Now, you might wonder, where do we go from here? Well, remember what I said about this, the match game. So you look at this 8x cubed term and you say, hey, who does he pair up with on the right side? And it certainly would be the ax cubed. And that forces you to see that the value of a in this problem must be 8 in order for this equation to be preserved. Now, the b value is kind of interesting because you look on the right side and, yep, he's the coefficient of x squared. But because there's no x squared on the left side, what do we pair b up with? Well, we could play that game. Really, there is a bx squared. There is a, an x squared on the right, on the left side. It's it's technically got a zero coefficient. See how it's indivis invisible here, you guys. So we could say that the b value is going to be equal to zero in that case. Now things start to get kind of interesting when you look at the 2a plus c, because that serves as the coefficient of x on the right side. The coefficient of x on the left side would be 13, and we're kind of like, oh, really? What do we do? can't solve this equation, right, with two unknowns. But if you're very confident that the a was equal to 8, and we are very confident that it is, you can go ahead and replace that a with 8. And now you're off to the races. And I believe the c is going to be negative 3, right, if you subtract the 16 over. And so we're just one coefficient away from finding our abc values, uh, abcd values in this case. And that leads us to the fact that 2b plus d, the constant on the right side, has no choice but to equal 0 because there is an invisible plus 0 here on the left side. And then, well, we know that the b is 0, so that 
kind of forces the D to be zero, doesn't it? And so it's all cut and dry. Now, if you'll notice, we haven't done a lick of calculus in this problem yet. And I guess the closest thing to calculus that I'm going to do is this next step where I'm going to rewrite the original integral. This integral that was giving us a lot of problems earlier on didn't seem to fit any particular rule other than the fact that we saw that the bottom was factored and we could go with partial fraction decomp, now has a totally different vibe. 8x plus b, ax plus b, which is 8x plus 0, is going to be the numerator of our x squared plus 2 to the first. And then we see that our cx plus d is technically negative 3x plus 0. So what I might do is make this plus a minus, put that 3x up there, x squared plus 2 quantity squared is my denominator, and now I have an equivalent decomposed fraction version of our original integral that was giving us trouble. And the hope is that you all see that this new version of this integral is much more manageable. We can actually find its integration. And I don't know how comfortable you are with the u substitution. I'll show you a, a little step here with our first part, but that's exactly what we do. We take u to be x squared plus 2. Know that the derivative is going to be 2x dx. And I'll scroll down here just a little bit if I can. Give me some more workspace. And I do see now that what's going to happen is that this stray 2 is going to have to reciprocate, come out in front as a 1 half, but there's already an 8 in our numerator. And so that 8 times the 1 half is going to be a 4. And now I'm just integrating 1 over u. Now remember, this x is being absorbed into the du form. And I would actually have natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus 2. But at this point, I really don't need the absolute values because x squared plus 2 is guaranteed to be positive. Now, for the second integral, a little bit trickier here, but the, the same idea holds. In fact, I can use the same exact substitution, which is kind of nice. Uh, in other words, I'm going to have my minus drop down. The 3 constant comes out in front. And that 3 will get multiplied by the reciprocal of the 2. But the only difference here is that I'm now integrating 1 over u squared with respect to u. And that is not going to be an in um, a, a natural logarithm form. Instead, that's going to become u to the negative 1 over negative 1, right? You're thinking of this as being u to the negative 2. Add 1 to negative 2, you get negative 1, divide by itself. And so what that's going to essentially do is, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll go ahead and write it a little bit unreduced or unsimplified here just to emphasize some things. But it's going to look a little something like that, I suppose. Don't forget your plus C. And that answer, by all means, is correct. But we could clean it up a little bit. We can clean it up really a lot of different ways. We don't have to write the 4 coefficient in front of our natural log as a power, but it's certainly feasible. It could be a result of a multiple choice answer. And then it looks like a double negative is going to cancel out these minuses. And then I have a 3 that will sit on top, the 2 on bottom, and then I can bring that x squared plus 2 all the way down to the denominator. And I'll add that plus c. So I don't want to forget that constant of integration. And I have an answer that would be uh, deemed uh, correct in this particular case. Um, if we want to take a look at this from a calculator standpoint, it may not be a bad idea to check our answer if we have a, a cat. So here we are looking at our TI Inspire computer algebra system software. One of my favorite parts of kind of uh, demonstrating in these videos uh, whether or not we have these integrals correct. Now, you could use a variety of other CAS calculators. Uh, you could certainly use Desmos and possibly some other online types of symbolic manipulators. But what we're basically going to do is we're going to enter that indefinite integral. Shift plus is our shortcut to do that. We're going to hit the delete button to get rid of our integration boundaries and then control divide to get our template and we're going to type in this equation exactly the way it appeared in our problem 8x cubed plus 13x on top 
and the denominator was x squared plus 2 quantity all squared and the moment of truth right i'm going to i'm going to get a better seat here so i can really see what's going to happen i'm going to look up and yes yes i'm hoping that we get the right answer so here we go i think we're right this does certainly look like the answer that we had on our page so we can rest assured that our technique was right that is how you can handle quadratic factors that repeat in a partial fraction decomp. Anyway, I hope this video helps. We'll see you next time.